All right, here we are in the kitchen for our final episode. It's been quite an adventure. We're gonna start out with a crab cake, but we're gonna finish our whole series with a little brunch. I wanted to give you a wide array of things you could cook and learn. I feel like the last couple episodes, I really enjoyed the food. I enjoyed the food the whole time, but now let's get to something that I've been making for a really long time. Get our pan warming up. While we do that, we might as well crack our eggs. So I'm gonna take a little shortcut here. I'm gonna crack all the eggs into one bowl for the whole project. Again, as I told you before, we're gonna to try to take some shortcuts in the manner of just less dishes and combining any prep. So for all the recipes today, we need five eggs. So I'm just gonna whisk those up while that pan heats up. We're gonna make a French omelet today, a crab cake sandwich, better known as the Krabby Patty, and a dairy-free French toast. Want to make sure those eggs are nice and whipped. All right. And this is nice and hot. We'll get a little oil in there. And we got our crab cake veg. Very similar to the Cajun Trinity. We have red peppers though, celery and onions. Some people put less vegetables into their crab cakes. And there's a thing called a crab imperial, which is actually a small crab casserole. And that has onions, peppers, and celery in it. And when I was a young chef working on the Delaware coast, we made all kinds. And I always thought the crab cake should have the same veg as the crab imperial. A little salt. Not too much seafood, because it comes from the sea. Doesn't need as much salt as terrestrial animals in general. I'm also gonna prep a little asparagus. Probably don't need that much for our omelet. Have that ready to go. Open our crab. This is one pound of crab claw meat. A basic crab cake recipe is this. You're going to have one pound crab mix. Um, if you had a one pound crab cake, uh, that would be an awful big crab cake. So, we have a crab. It's about a pound. Comes fully cooked. You always want to just smell it and make sure that it's no off scents. Put a little garlic in there. About a half a cup of breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs help it bind. We're gonna put one egg, which is two ounces generally, so it's about half a ladle there. Then we're gonna take one more egg for our French toast, and that should sort us out pretty well. A quarter cup of mayonnaise. A tablespoon of Dijon. Some recipes call for dry mustard. And about a tablespoon of your favorite seafood powder. A little bit of white pepper. A little white pepper for our omelet. With the mayonnaise, the Dijon, the seafood seasoning, you don't really need much salt. We're gonna stir this around. Get these vegetables nice and cooked. Turn that down a little bit. All right, what else can we get going? So this, our basic crab cake, we wanna push it gently. You don't wanna mix it up. I always call it when everyone takes a food, whether it's shredded pork, crab, cooked crab, and they mash it up really good. I feel like you're just making cat food at that point. We're just trying to make this as nice as possible. Oh, a nice black pepper. As always a little to our veg. And I'm gonna transfer this actually to a bowl. It'll be a little easier to mix in. It's gonna make my job a lot easier. Push some of those in there. Fold that in gently. You're gonna just lift it from the outside and push it through the middle. As I said, it's fully cooked so you can taste it. As you go. 
let's see what we got here. Here's a hmm. I think it's good. Fully mixed. We're just gonna set that aside for now and get rolling on the next thing. I'm gonna turn the pan back on, add some oil, and we'll get our mushrooms going. Julia Child says, don't crowd your pan. So we wanna be able to see the bottom a little bit. Take our spoon here, a little salt, put it in our asparagus. More fresh black pepper. Now you can see, as I turn around, some of the mushrooms are already starting to brown. We're gonna let that go nice and slow. Next project, we're gonna make a little French toast. Change out knives. You're gonna a nice white sourdough loaf. It looks crusty on the outside. It's actually quite soft. I don't like the outsides to be too French toast should be nice and soft. Looks like I can make about three pieces. I'm gonna do about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. No, nope, there's a nice piece, both sides. Okay, we have one egg here. We're gonna get some dairy-free milk. Here, have some almond milk. I have about one egg to that. Looks like about one cup. A teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. A little bit of orange extract. Bring our whisk back. And everyone loves a little cinnamon in there. The thing about the cinnamon is, is if you add it in the beginning before you're whisking, it will just clump up on you. And you're gonna add a lot of sugar to the end. Syrup, powdered sugar, all these things. But I still do think that one or two tablespoons of powdered sugar. Okay, so we've mixed our powdered sugar, our extracts, our cinnamon, our almond milk, and egg in here. If you look over on this side, our mushrooms are nicely cooked. Our asparagus is slightly soft, and I think that's just fine. We can move that to the back and get working on our next step. So, we're gonna try to use as few pans as possible so what we're doing right now is we're gonna, again, work downhill. We're gonna go from French toast to bun to crab cake, and then we'll be done with that pan. We can cook the French toast about 80%, and if we're doing a whole brunch for you know family or friends or we're having a gathering, we can have our veggies prepped, we can have our crab prepped, we can have our French toast mostly cooked. We'll finish it in the oven for service. So let's get started on that. We'll turn that up. Obviously, some people like to cook French toast and butter. I don't think it's really necessary. And we're doing dairy-free cooking, so we're gonna use olive oil for that, too. I think a lot of people would think, oh, shocking that you would want olive oil add a flavor to the French toast. It really won't. You really won't notice at all. Over in our omelet mix, a teaspoon of salt. Eggs don't need as much salt as you think. What we do need a little salt for is we're gonna add a tiny bit of water to it. There we go. Because we're not adding milk to our omelet or anything, I suppose you could add almond milk, um, but I that definitely, I think, takes away from the flavor of the egg. Now onto our French toast. You wanna put it in a couple times. Most people say that's done. You really wanna press it like a sponge and get it to absorb that liquid. That's what makes a French toast. It's kinda of like a custard inside. It's not just a glaze on the outside. When we're in the kitchen, I usually let them sit in the pan, you know, that we're tossing them in for two or three minutes. Um, again, pressing gently. Actually, you can do this with tofu as well. If you're marinating tofu, if you just gently squeeze it a little bit, the tofu will act as a sponge and take up any marinade that you have. So there's a little side tip. All right, and last but not least, get that one down in the liquid. And I think pan should be ready. Oh yeah, it's hot. You are frying it slightly, so it is nice to have a decent amount of oil in the pan, but you don't want to float it all the same. Get that to work around. Let your French toast drain. You can even squeegee it a little bit. Turn this down. Always clean as you go. 
smells good. You can smell the cinnamon, you can smell the orange, you can smell the vanilla. Um, as I said, you see how the bread absorbed everything. If you don't let the bread drain off a little bit, you'll kind of get a little scrambled egg around your toast. We're going to wait and do our omelet last. So while we're doing this, we might as well form our Krabby Patties. Crab cakes don't shrink like burgers do when you cook them. So we're going to want to think about how big of a crab cake do we want for that sandwich without it being overpowering the bread or the crab. Take a peek over here real fast. Take a small handful of crab and we're going to form it into a patty. And if you feel your mixture is a little wet, which I do, I feel like we're going to add a little, we're going to just add the rest of these breadcrumbs. It'll help it bind more later when it cooks and as it sits with the breadcrumbs and they absorb some moisture, they'll really help it stay together, give you a better texture. All right. You can start with your patties like this because when we put them in the pan, we can push them down with the spatula. So we're going to make about three patties today. And we're going to start them off like that. Come back to our French toast. If you can see that, nice golden brown. Even better. So if you touch it, you can still feel the custard, basically, that we put inside in there. It looks really good. And those are about ready to come out. When they come out, we'll start the crab cakes. So for now, we'll come back to this. And we have the most beautiful tomatoes. It's important what grocery store you shop at, just if you love produce. If you're buying canned goods and meats, I don't know if it always matters as much. You can really tell a grocery store by its produce. Then, so we have three beautiful slices of tomato. And that's plenty of onion. We really don't need too much of that. One of the stronger flavors, so we'll put those up there. Our buns, and then we're just going to cut this off, cut this in half. This is what we would call a burger set. A couple pieces of lettuce because it's a little smaller. This one's pretty nice. Move this to the side. And then each buddy gets a tomato. Everyone gets a couple of onions. All right, I think our French toast is done. I can feel it. As I said, it's almost finished. Transfer that to a plate until we're ready with our brunch. Oh, they got better. So, move those to the side. Everything's going to start going really fast. I'm going to turn that down. As I said, I'm going to pick up and I'm going to place our Krabby Patties. Right in the pot. It's out of our way. Okay. So now we have our burger sets. I could have done the buns first. It doesn't matter because they're going together. Obviously, I wouldn't want to do the French toast last. And then we're going to start working on our omelet. Crab cakes are going. As I said, we'll add a little bit of more oil to the pan. Look at our buns. We've pressed our crab cakes down. We'll rinse off our spatula. Get those pushed together. Now let's see. Oh, I'll show you one real fun thing real fast. Over here, we're going to make a nice French toast sauce. We'll take a handful of blackberries. And then a spoon of mixed berry jam. And then over here we have our maple syrup. So it's about three tablespoons of blackberry jam and probably two to three tablespoons of maple syrup. We're just gonna put this back here on low and let that warm up slowly. Our crab cakes are almost done. Our omelet pan is 
almost ready. This is why I would have liked to have the buns done, because I could have taken them out of here right and put them on the buns. But instead, we're gonna have to transfer them once. We have our oven on. Take our buns like so. Take our oil. And here's a little trick that you can use. You're gonna put a little oil on the plate, swirl it around. You're just gonna tap your bun in it. And then clean up that plate. Get all the oil, set it aside, pull out your baking tray, put your buns face down. Check our crab cakes, they're coming along quite nice. Turn it up real fast. You can help form the crab cakes back together if you feel like they're gonna break apart. These ones seem to be staying together quite well. And they can even go in the oven when we're ready. French toast, omelet, next. We need a plate for that. And away we go. A little oil. You can see it running pretty fast. Here's our egg. You're gonna scramble it really quick. You're gonna pull the sides back slightly. If you see it's cooking more here than here, move that part kind of away from the heat. Move this side, it'll be more uniform. Let that form. You can flip it. But for a French omelet, you kinda of wanna get the egg underneath. And then there's a kind of a rolling technique. You're gonna constantly push it up, keep it nice and creamy inside, pull the insides back. Some people tap it. I'm gonna turn it up, pull some egg back, pull some egg back, pull it back, it's done, it's done, it's done. It's a little wetter than a normal omelet. Put our filling in there. We got a little bit to go. We're gonna keep trying to pull it back, pull it back. Tuck it under and roll it over. Take our French toast, place it in the oven with our buns. Check our buns, they're not quite ready. You take the rest of your vegetables and place them next to the omelet. If you do this right, this is the first one I've done in a while, you can split the omelet open, it'll be a little creamy, you can add a cream sauce to it, you can honestly add a dummy glaze with mushrooms, you could put this in a sauce. All right, and now everything should be done. We got our blackberry sauce, get that nice and hot. It's looking a little loose, I'm gonna add some more jam to it. Oh. So good, until that comes together, come down here, take out our buns. They're lightly toasted. They just got a tiny bit of color. Whew. Whew. French toast, working, sauce working. These are in. We're gonna take a little bit of mayonnaise, put it on the bun. You can use a remoulade, a caper, you can use a Dijonese, whatever you prefer. If your crab cake is seasoned properly, I always tell people to try to get the mayonnaise on the whole bun. So every bite is the same. That's all you'll need. The crab cakes are quite rich. Our syrup is going, I could turn it off. Each one, one little crab cake. Two little crab cake. And the third one. This easy. Put on your burger sets. If you think there's too much lettuce, take some off by all means. 
I don't need a salad, I'm eating a sandwich. Bun, bun, bun. Pick, pick, pick. Final thing, a last piece of fun. I started making dairy-free French toast for my daughter who couldn't eat dairy. And we always, and the crab cake. So this whole meal is really for her. Uh, she helped me start my company. She was there, she was only like six or seven years old. She would do her homework on the prep tables while I was cooking. She would skewer things. Um, I used to have to like tie a knot in the apron. So like, cause the apron would hang all the way to the middle of her stomach. So she was really integral in helping me get savory cuisines going. A couple things she loved were omelets. Crabby Patties, we just watched Spongebob together all the time and we thought it was hilarious and because I owned a business, she called me Mr. Krabs, which is a, um, wasn't sure it was always a compliment. I don't think she always meant it as one, but we had a lot of fun and we always enjoyed having Krabby Patties, omelets, and her favorite French toast. So with this French toast, you can do it any way you want, but we'll cut it. You can see it's pretty much just, it's done in the middle, but it's still like gooey custardy. Very simple. You can use a shaker or you can use one of these and take a little powdered sugar. Take some of our syrup. Just really good. Uh-oh. Again, we're not making rockets, but we made a little bit of a mess. And then you have a maple blackberry French toast syrup. You can add more if you want. Get our crab cakes all lined up. A little French omelet. Clean up the plate. And voila, breakfast, no problem. It goes great. You can do a brunch in, a breakfast, a lunch in. You can eat French toast anytime you want as dessert. You can eat eggs for dinner but I hope you really learned something. Breakfast is super simple. It's one of my favorite meals. It's really easy to make look beautiful. You could flip your omelet. Uh, Americans don't li really like runny eggs, so you can flip your omelet part way through. It probably would have been a little less brown and uh, it would have been a little drier inside, but I like my eggs a little soft. Well, that's a wrap on our final episode. Once again, I'm Chef Bob Sargent with Savory Cuisines Catering. Thanks for joining me on our culinary adventure through Colorado cuisine. I'd like to thank everyone who helped me and especially eat this TV. It was really a great experience and I hope that uh, we can join you again sometime.